As previously stated in many of my rewriting Who history videos, hindsight is a wonderful thing. It allows people who have never been qualified for a particular job to suggest how they would change something without the repercussions of failure. So with that being said, here's my video for rewriting the Doctor Who TV movie. But before I start, I have to explain the basic structure I'll be using. Now I'm sure many of you listening are aware of the three act structure. However, I'll be using the early George Lucas method, which is essentially the same as the three act structure, but with a slight change within the first act as it will be split into two parts. For example, in Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first part of Act 1 could have been the ending of a previous movie, and apart from a brief scene between Indy and Belloc, it pretty much has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. The actual story for Raiders begins after the opening scene, when Indy returns back to work, and he's informed of Hitler's intentions of finding the Ark. So with that in mind, I shall begin rewriting the Doctor Who TV movie by starting off with renaming it to Doctor Who Time Bomb. Now that's out of the way, let's begin with the actual rewriting. The movie would begin overlooking Scaro. Suddenly a Time Lord spacecraft flies overhead towards the planet. Inside the spacecraft, the War Chief is trying to get in contact with the Seventh Doctor, but to no avail. Inside the Dalek city, the Daleks are looking for the Doctor, but they can't find him, so they move on to the next section. Once alone, the Doctor reveals himself. The War Chief finally makes contact, asking the Doctor if he is in possession of the Time Bomb. The Doctor replies he isn't, and for the War Chief to keep the noise down, as there are many Daleks looking for him. A nearby door slides open, and the Doctor looks around expecting the worst, but is relieved to see the Master. The Master says he's got the time bomb, and they should leave as soon as possible. The Doctor questions why the Master is being so helpful, to which the Master replies, if he and the Doctor are successful in their mission, the Time Lords have promised him a new regeneration cycle. A Dalek then spots them, and the two run away, however during the escape, the Master is shot just before he and the Doctor pass through a nearby closing door. The Daleks reach the door but it won't open, so they call for another Dalek variant who is able to cut through the door. Meanwhile, on the other side of the door, the Doctor tries to comfort the Master, but the Master knows he's dying. Which is ironic, as he only accepted this mission to gain more life. The Master tells the Doctor to leave him behind, but to take his signet ring, as it contains his biodata, which will be uploaded into the Matrix back on Gallifrey. The Doctor takes the ring, and the Master dies. By this time, the Daleks have cut their way through the door, and are once again in pursuit of the Doctor. However, the Doctor reaches the TARDIS and informs the Time Lords he has the Time Bomb and he'll meet them back on Gallifrey. The Doctor then flicks a few switches and the TARDIS leaves Scaro as the Daleks attempt to shoot it. In the TARDIS, the Doctor continues to tap away at the console until he looks over at the Master's Ring. After a brief moment of grief, he snaps out of it and goes back to work in the console. The camera slowly pulls back to the ring, which has now started glowing, and as the glow intensifies, we hear Roger Delgado's master laughing. As the laughter intensifies, the TARDIS goes berserk. The Doctor tries his best to control the situation, but a switch on the console is flicked by an invisible force. This switch causes the TARDIS doors to open, and a nearby explosion propels the Doctor towards them. We then cut to the TARDIS as it travels through space. Only the Doctor is hanging from it with his trademark umbrella. 
And as the TARDIS enters the time vortex, the opening credits begin. After the opening credits, we're still in space, but we're now overlooking Earth as the TARDIS flies towards the planet with the Doctor still clinging to it by his umbrella. As the TARDIS flies over America, the Master's spirit shuts the doors, causing the Doctor to fall from a great height. We then cut to two police officers sitting in their patrol car, discussing their plans for New Year's Eve. Suddenly, the Doctor crashes onto the police car. One of the officers picks up the radio and says they're going to need an ambulance ASAP. Meanwhile, at a nearby farm, the TARDIS crashes into the barn. The farmer goes to investigate the disturbance and finds the mysterious blue box. As he walks around it, he hears movement from the other side of the barn. Still curious to find out what's happening, he gingerly walks over and he's met by the spirit of the master. At the hospital, a young surgeon by the name of Grace is on duty as the doctor is brought in. The team of surgeons try to save the doctor, but they are unable to and the doctor dies. This leaves Grace feeling dejected as she believes she could have done more to save him. Back at the farm, the farmer's wife wonders what's taking her husband so long, so she enters the barn, sees the TARDIS, and asks her husband what's going on. The farmer turns around to reveal the master has taken over his body, and the wife screams. At the hospital, Grace is still feeling guilty about not being able to save her patient. A colleague comforts her, saying she did everything she could, but sometimes things just go wrong. Grace can't accept that and says she's going to try to find someone who knew the deceased so she can have closure. The colleague then tells her the body has been moved to the morgue. However, during the time it takes Grace to reach the morgue, the seventh doctor has regenerated into the eighth doctor and her patient is no more. The Eighth Doctor wakes up and questions who he is. Grace enters and wonders where the body of the recently deceased man is. Naturally, the new Doctor is just as confused as she is, whilst claiming to have no memory of who he is or how he got there. Grace calls for security and they take the Doctor to a secure location whilst Grace continues her search for the missing patient. Back at the farm, we find out the farmer's wife has been hypnotised by the master and she is now under his control. We also learn the master plans on setting off the time bomb as the people of Earth celebrate the beginning of a new year. We then cut back to the hospital where the security team are fast forwarding through some CCTV footage whilst Grace looks on. They notice that the body of the deceased man never left the morgue, whilst more interestingly, the man they found instead never actually entered. Security want to question the doctor, but seeing as how Grace wants to find out the identity of the old doctor so badly, she says she'll talk to him as she may be able to use her feminine charms to persuade the mystery man to tell her the truth. She grabs the bag containing the last Doctor's possessions before entering the security room. Grace asks the Doctor who he is, but he cannot answer. She then gives him the bag to look through and he examines a few things, including the sonic screwdriver. She asks him what's that for, but once again he cannot give her an answer. Suddenly the Doctor gasps in pain. Grace tries to help, but she's shocked to see him remove a piece of medical equipment that had broken off during her surgery on the mystery man. She is even more shocked when after it has been removed, the initial incision heals itself with some regeneration energy. Grace asks, who are you? To which the doctor replies, I haven't the faintest idea. Meanwhile, the Master and the Wife are transporting the TARDIS across the Golden Gate Bridge. 
The Master talks about his plan and how he's finally going to get his revenge on the Time Lords for continually breaking their promises about new regeneration cycles. When the hypnotised wife asks why they didn't set off the time bomb back at the farm, the Master retorts with, If we detonated it there, then people wouldn't know what had happened. And where's the fun in that? This is followed by a brief moment where the Master seems to be losing control of his new body, but after a quick internal struggle, he becomes the dominant force again. Back at the hospital, the Doctor has somehow managed to convince Grace to help him find out who he really is. But first, she has to bust him out of the building, which is a problem as they have to secretly pass all security measures. The Doctor has a brief moment of remembrance and gives Grace his sonic screwdriver. He says, here, take this, point it towards a security camera and press the button. Grace asks what'll happen, and the Doctor replies, I don't know. So Grace exits the room and quickly comes across a security camera. She does exactly what the Doctor told her to do, and there is a tiny explosion indicating the camera is now offline. Grace beckons the Doctor out of the security room, looks at him and says, If we're going to get you out of here, you're going to need some clothes. The Doctor agrees and they head towards the staff's changing room. The Master arrives at the location where news stations have set up to broadcast the live Millennium celebrations. He is questioned by the security team at the event, but by using his hypnotic powers, he easily manages to evade them, whilst also enlisting them to help pull off his dastardly plan. The Doctor exits the staff changing room, now adorned in his new attire. He asks, how do I look? And Grace replies with, it'll do. The two of them then casually leave the hospital. Back at the New Year celebrations, the security team have escorted the Master to where he wants to go, and as they are no longer any use to him, he kills them. Grace and the Doctor arrive at her apartment, and as she sifts through her mail, the Doctor heads towards the TV and begins channel hopping until he reaches the news. The news channel is talking about the New Year celebration, which is due to start. The Doctor notices something in the background. It's the TARDIS. He stares at it, but something just isn't clicking. That is until the news reporter interviews a scientist about the potential Y2K disaster. The reporter starts the interview with the words, Now Professor, to which the scientist replies, Actually, it's Doctor. This causes the Doctor to replay the words, Professor and Doctor, in his head, whilst he continues to look at the TARDIS. As the words Doctor and Professor intensify, different people are now saying it, and these people are the Doctor's former companions. Starting with Ace saying Professor, and regressing back to all the other companions saying Doctor. The last voice we hear is Susan calling out for her grandfather, which snaps the Doctor out of his amnesia, and he now knows who he is and what happened to him before his regeneration. He tells Grace he needs to get to his blue box and stop the Master. Inside the TARDIS, the Master is hooking up the time bomb to the console. This is because ordinarily the time bomb would only affect the planet it's on, whereas connecting it to the TARDIS would affect every moment in both time and space. Back with the Doctor and Grace, and they are racing towards the New Year celebratory party until they are pulled over by a police officer. After getting out of the car, the Doctor offers the police officer a jelly baby, but before the officer can grab one, the Doctor uses some Venusian Aikido to incapacitate the officer. The Doctor laments that he didn't want to do that, but they should take the officer's motorbike as they're running out of time. To which Grace says, why, so we can be in even more trouble? And the Doctor retorts with, if we don't get there as soon as possible, there won't be a future to get in trouble in. 
So Grace reluctantly joins the doctor on the back of the officer's motorbike and they carry on with their journey. In the TARDIS, the master has finished connecting the time bomb to the console. The hypnotized farmer's wife says they should detonate it now, but the master admonishes her, stating there's still not enough eyes watching his greatest achievement, but at midnight, the whole universe would cower in fear. The Doctor and Grace finally arrive at their destination, but to get to the TARDIS, they have to pass through a horde of celebrating people. And by the time they get to the TARDIS, it is minutes before midnight. The Master and the Farmer's Wife exit the TARDIS, and they're confronted by the Doctor. The Doctor tries to talk the Master out of his plan, but the Master isn't having any of it, and he produces the detonator whilst he continues his monologue about how great he is. This is when Grace runs by and snatches the detonator from the Master. This leads to a chase scene between the Doctor Grace, the Master, and the Farmer's Wife, which comes to an end in a secluded area. Here there are a couple of fist fights, one between the Doctor and the Master, and the other between Grace and the Farmer's Wife. This ultimately ends up with the villains getting the upper hand, with the Master holding Grace at knife point. The Master tells the Doctor he'll let Grace go once he has the detonator, but the Doctor rightly states that if the Master has the detonator, Grace will die anyway. The Master is not happy with this reply, and he attempts to plunge the knife into Grace, but he suddenly stops. There is a back and forth between the Master's spirit and the Farmer's will, as the two jostle for control of the body. This leads to the Master threatening the Farmer by saying, if you put up a fight, then your wife will die. But the Doctor interjects, stating if he does give in to the Master, the Time Bomb will kill his wife anyway. Fed up with the arguing, the Master clicks his fingers and the Farmer's wife falls to the ground. Grace rushes over, but there is nothing she can do. The Farmer's wife's heart stopped the moment the Master ended his hypnotic trance over her. The farmer has given up hope and the master is slowly regaining full control of the farmer's body. But as the master gloats, he is stabbed in the chest. The master looks down and sees that he was stabbed by himself, or more accurately, the farmer. The doctor walks over to the master's stolen body and tells him he should have never doubted the will of a human being as they're much stronger than they look. The Master laughs, and in his final act, he detonates the Time Bomb. There is a brief moment of calm, as the Doctor looks on, wondering what's going to happen next. Suddenly, a number of two-way time portals begin to tear holes in the fabric of time. This means our current point of time, the 1st of January 2000, is now connected to various other time periods in the Earth's history. The first portal that opens up releases a number of dinosaurs, which naturally causes all the present day people to run away. More portals begin to open, and different creatures, peoples and machinery fall through the holes in time. The Doctor tells Grace they've got to get to the TARDIS, however whilst running towards it, they end up being chased by a bunch of cowboys on horseback. Luckily for them, the cowboys are taken out by a rampaging T-Rex, and both the Doctor and Grace safely make it to the TARDIS, where the Doctor immediately disconnects the time bomb from the console, and travels back in time to the moment before the time bomb was detonated. We're now five minutes back in time, and the Master is just about to kill the Farmer's Wife when the future TARDIS materialises nearby. As the previous scene plays out, the future Doctor and Grace quietly sneak into the past TARDIS. Once inside, the Doctor disconnects the time bomb from the console and then begins to disarm the bomb itself whilst Grace watches what's happening outside on the monitor. 
What she's seen is the master's struggle to control the farmer's body. Grace tells the doctor he's running out of time and the doctor just manages to finish disarming the bomb just as the master is about to detonate it. Outside the TARDIS, the master can't believe he's failed and then he dies. The past doctor and Grace wonder what happened as fireworks erupt in the air signalling all is right with the world. Back with the future versions, Grace tells the Doctor they should get out of the past TARDIS, but the Doctor says he's just leaving himself a message. Whilst the celebrations continue, the future Doctor and Grace exit the past TARDIS and then enter their own before it dematerialises. So from now on, we're seeing things from the perspective of the past versions of the Doctor and Grace. They enter the TARDIS and both continue to wonder why the time bomb didn't detonate when suddenly a hologrammatic version of the future Doctor appears explaining what just happened from his point of view before disappearing from time and space itself. When the Doctor asks Grace, do you understand what just happened? She shakes her head no and he then says, me neither, now let's get you home. The TARDIS materialises inside Grace's apartment and Grace is relieved to be home where she can finally relax. The Doctor offers her a chance to travel with him but she declines. The two say their goodbyes and the Doctor departs leaving Grace to wonder if she has made the right choice. As the TARDIS travels through the time vortex, the Doctor makes contact with Gallifrey and tells them that he's on his way to deliver the time bomb. Suddenly, an incoming message reaches the TARDIS and the Doctor puts the Time Lords on hold as he accepts the new call. The new message is from the Brigadier who says, Ah, there you are, Doctor. Dear heavens, you've done it again, haven't you? Well, there's no time for chit-chat as I'm afraid we've got a bit of a problem. The Doctor asks what kind of problem, and the Brigadier answers, Cybermen. Without thinking about it, the Doctor replies with, I'll be right there. He then ends the call with the Brigadier, and goes back to speaking to the Time Lords. The Doctor apologises to them, and says, I may be a bit late, something rather important has just come up. But before the Time Lords can show their displeasure, the Doctor ends the transmission. The Doctor then taps away at the console and the TARDIS disappears down the time vortex as the end credits begin. So there it is, my attempt at rewriting the Doctor Who TV movie. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any suggestions for any potential rewriting Who History videos, please leave a message below.